Good morning. Welcome to First Methodist Church. <laughs> we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Would you stand with me as you're able? Hallelujah. Christ is risen. He, he is, is risen, risen indeed. Hallelujah. Christ the Lord is risen this day. <laughs>
my shelter. out your faith together this day. I I believe believe in God God the Father Father Almighty, maker maker of of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and was buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen and amen. You may be seated. Good morning. How are you all this happy Easter Resurrection Day? 
Hallelujah. If you'll be so kind as to fill out your attendance, uh, if you've got a change of address, phone number, email, let us know. There's places. And if you need something that's not on the list, just write it on there and we'll make sure something happens. And then there are prayer requests on the other side. If you have a prayer request, please uh, be uh, so kind as to let us know what that is so we can lift it up. And you can just put those in the offering plates as the ushers come. Also, um, on April 13th, we have the Biblical Citizenship class starting over in the crossover at um, 6 p.m. So, come on, it's going to be a great class. Uh, it'll be a lot of fun. If the ushers will come on down. And then... Um, the men's breakfast is Tuesday, April 18th. This is the sign-up sheet that's going to be on the back table out there in the atrium. And uh, you can sign up, and so we just have a count. I don't want to cook too many eggs, you know. <laughs> so let's pray. Father God, we do thank you for this opportunity to worship you in tithes and offerings. And we just ask your mighty blessing. Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now is our time of prayer. These altars are open. If you'd like to come down and just pray for a moment, that would be great. If you have a need and would like prayer, let me know. If you can't make it down here, wave at me so I can come to you. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> and uh, if God has laid someone on your heart this week to pray for them, uh, go to that person and, and pray for them. Pray with them. And so come. The altars are open.
Father, we do give you thanks and praise for this beautiful day, this day like no other day, that we remember and commemorate that Jesus Christ was risen from the dead. And Lord, we thank you that the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in us. And so we give you praise and thanks for your loving kindness, your grace, and your glorious mercy. And we ask your blessing, Father, today. Encourage your people, strengthen them for the work that you've called them to. Minister to them. Let your spirit flow among us and and bring us to a, a new place, a new life, a new transition, Lord, that we are going through. That, Lord, you are directing our path and, and that, Father, you have work for us to do that you've already created and we're just going to be doing what you've already done. And so, Lord, help us to see where you're working so we can work there. And Lord, we thank you for the, the work that is being done and feeding the poor and, and ministering to them and, and uh, providing food for those who need it and, and all the other cares that uh, deal with human life, Father, with our lives. That you are present in the midst of all of these things and that, Lord, your spirit is there strengthening and encouraging us as we follow through on what you've commanded us to do. To feed the hungry, to clothe the naked, to visit the sick, to minister to those in the prison. And so, Lord, we give you praise and thanks for opportunities to do those very things. And Father, we give you thanks for this nation that we live in, where we are... are free to worship you in the way that we choose and Lord the way that you want us to in spirit and in truth and so Lord we lift up our elected servants our President Biden and Vice President Harris the cabinet, the house, the senate the supreme court our, our state government, the governor and lieutenant governor, the legislature is there meeting the uh, courts, our county judge and supervisors, our mayor and council. The upcoming election in May, Lord, we just lift that up to you and ask that you put people in there that you want. And so, Lord, we just thank you that they're not elected unless you want them to be. And so we come to you and we give you thanks. Help us to see where you're headed there, Lord, so we can go in the same direction. And Lord, in all these things, we give you thanks and praise. We remember our first responders, and we ask you bless them. We remember those who are in the military and those who have served in the military. And we lift them up to you and say thank you for your service. And Lord, we thank you for all that you are doing right here in the midst of the body of Christ called First Methodist. And here in Abilene, Lord, how you are sending us out into the highways and the byways to compel people to bring people into the house of God, to bring people into the kingdom and encourage their spirits and meet their needs and minister to them. And so, Lord, pour your spirit out upon us. For we ask this all in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, who is risen from the dead. Amen. Hear this invitation. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sins and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, 
Let us confess our sins before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us take a moment to pray in silence. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners, and that proves God's love towards us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you. Offer the peace of Christ to those around you. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord. God of power and might. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread. He gave thanks to you. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of the universe, who bringeth forth bread from the earth. He broke the bread and gave it to his disciples and said, Take eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup and gave you thanks. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who bringeth forth the fruit of the vine. He gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here. And on these gifts of bread and wine, make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. 
By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, with the confidence of children of God, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Will those who are going to serve come at this time? Karen will serve those who aren't able to come down. Come and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ.
coming down here with y'all. I hope you don't mind, so. Yeah. Yeah. The, uh, <laughs> the sound guy said I couldn't get much past there, so I'll edge up. If I start squeaking, I'll back up. The, uh, our scripture lesson today, oh, well. It comes from Luke chapter 24. It's, it's about the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And what an exciting day that we gather today to, to celebrate and remember that Christ rose from the dead. And because he did, we can live new lives. Hallelujah. And because he rose, he sent the Holy Spirit so we wouldn't be lonely. And because he rose, he's coming back again to take us where he's going to be. Amen. Hallelujah. And the good news over in Revelation t chapter 21, it says the new heaven and the new earth, and, and uh, God came to the new heaven and new earth. Jerusalem came down, and, and we all got to live there. So, see, you're all going to Jerusalem at some point if you know Jesus is your Savior. Hopefully it's the new Jerusalem. But, you know, if you get to visit the other one, that's great, too. All right, Luke chapter 24. On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, you, you know, I did invite you all to come and use the atrium to have a sunrise service. I didn't see many of you here. I wasn't there, I wasn't there either, no. <laughs> so, but I, I, I did say you could, uh, but I think Michael was here at 645, so he would have let you in, so... There you go. Very early in the morning, the women took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb, and they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. And while they were wondering about this, suddenly, I like it when it says suddenly, and suddenly, there was with the angel. All right. A multitude of the heavenly hosts. Remember that in the beginning? So they're showing up again. And suddenly, two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground. But the, the men said to them, why do you look for the living among the dead? He's not here. He is risen. 
Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee? The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men, be crucified on the third day, he be raised again. Then they remembered his words. When they came back from the tomb, they told all these things to the eleven and to all the others. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the others with them who told this to the apostles. But they did not believe the women because their words seemed to them like nonsense. Peter, however, got up and ran to the tomb. Bending over, he saw the strips of linen lying by themselves, and he went away wondering to himself what had happened. Now that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened, and as they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them, but they were kept from recognizing him. And he asked them, what are you discussing together as you walk along? <laughs> they stood still, their faces downcast. One of them named Cleopas asked him, Are you the only visitor to Jerusalem? And are you only a visitor to Jerusalem? And do you not know the things that have happened there in these days? What things? He asked. Isn't that interesting? Jesus asked the question he already knows the answer to. <laughs> That's usually what happens when he's talking to you. He already knows the answer to the question, but he wants to make sure you know. About Jesus of Nazareth, they replied, he was a prophet, powerful in word and deed before God and all the people. The chief priests and other rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death, and they crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is more, it is the third day since all this took place. In addition, some of our women amazed us. They, they went to the tomb early this morning but didn't find his body. And they came and told us that they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said. But him they did not see. He said to them, how foolish you are. And how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Did not the Christ have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? And beginning from Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. As they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus acted as if he were going further. But they urged him strongly, stay with us. For it is nearly evening, and the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and began to give it to them. Then their eyes were open, and they recognized him, and he disappeared from their sight. They asked each other, Where were not our hearts burning within us while he talked to us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? They got up and returned at once to Jerusalem. There they found the eleven and those with them assembled together and saying, It is true, the Lord has risen and has appeared to Simon. Then the two told what happened on the way and how Jesus was recognized by them when he broke the bread. While they were still talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be still. Can you imagine that? I mean... You'd be frightened. I would if somebody just appeared out of the middle in the midst right here, poof. Yeah. He'd have to say, peace be still. And because he's the son of God, it, it entered into their hearts. Let's see what happened. They were startled and frightened, thinking that they saw a ghost. And he said to them, why are you troubled? And why do, you doubt, why do doubts rise in your minds? Look at my hands and at my feet it is I myself. Touch me and see. A ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see I have. Interesting. Since we're getting a body like that, we're going to have flesh and bones. Isn't that interesting? All right. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and feet. And while they still did not believe it, because of joy and amazement, he asked them, can you imagine a 33-year-old shows up at your house? Mom, Grandma, you got anything to eat? Yeah. Do you have anything here to eat? And they gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he, he took it and ate it in their presence. We're going to get to eat food. 
Isn't that good? Yeah, it'll be good food too. He said to them, this is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms. Then he opened their minds so that they could understand the scriptures. And he told them, this is what is written. The Christ will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day. And repentance and forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things, and I'm going to send you what my Father has promised. But stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. When he had led them out to the vicinity of Bethany, he lifted up his hands and blessed them. And while he was blessing them, he left them and was taken up into heaven. Then they worshiped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they stayed continually at the temple praising God. It's the word of God for the people of God. Will you pray with me and for me? Father, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. What a savior. The, uh, it's, well, I was trying to figure out what to name this sermon, you know. And I thought, surprise! (laughs) I mean, you know, just think about it. We, had, we put him in the tomb. We know he's dead. They stuck that spear in his side. The blotter and the blood came gushing out. I mean, the Romans, when they killed you, they killed you. You know? And, and so, and in the tomb, I heard a story about that. The uh, Pilate was talking with Joseph of Arimathea, you know, because Joseph went to beg the body of Christ and he found out he was dead already. And he, Pilate says, you, you paid a lot of money to have that tomb made. Why, why are you giving it to this, this prisoner? And Joseph looked at him and said, oh, it's a weekend rental. <laughs> I thought it was good. I don't know. <laughs> Dad joke. Kind of lighten you guys up. So, resurrection surprise. You know, it'd be just like us. The the resurrection constantly, uh, consistently catches the disciples off guard. They're not prepared for it. Even though he's told them several times throughout his life with them that, you know, this is going to happen. They have a difficult time adjusting to the reality that Jesus is alive again. And, and I think sometimes we have those same difficulties as we try to, you know, follow after Jesus. And uh, we all do, and it's okay. That's why we're here together as a group, so we can minister to one another, pray for one another, encourage one another's heart, lift one another up. Do the things that we need to do. Sometimes you just need a hug from people that you know. We give hugs here. You see, but Jesus' words drives home the point Scripture predicted these events would take place. And God keeps his word. God keeps his word even when it involves things seemingly impossible. So Luke 24, 1 through 12 highlighted the empty tomb. And then in 24, 13 through 35, it presented an appearance by Jesus and stressed how Scripture prophesied the resurrection. And then in Luke 24, 36 through 53, it's an extension of the previous passage where the reporting over Jesus' various appearances continues and uh, the momentum of his appearance is stacking up as one meeting follows another in rapid succession. You know, 
That's why we have church on Sunday. It's resurrection day. And so we celebrate the resurrection every Sunday when we gather together. That's why we, we celebrate on Sunday. And so the continual gathering together, the continual celebrating of this last meal with his disciples uh, should develop in us uh, momentum. to encourage our hearts and to, to help us follow after Jesus. Then Luke reveals Jesus' post-resurrection commission to his disciples to go to all nations. Jesus also gives further evidence through his partaking of a meal and his invitation to the disciples to touch him, showing his appearance is, is no mere apparition. Jesus does just not appear to have raised bodily. He has been raised from the dead indeed. That was a good place to say amen. amen. Yeah. I got to get a sign to help you folks. You see, God keeps his word. If he said it, it's going to happen. The resurrection is one of the greatest of God's promises, and according to our Christian hope, God gives everlasting life to his children in a world he will make and renew. And uh, Revelation 21 and 22 talks about that. I'm going to share a few verses. Uh, Revelation chapter 21, 1 through 3. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Now the dwelling of God is with men, and, and he will live with us, and they will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. Amen. Amen. And if such a world is to come, and, and if God keeps his word, and we know the answer to all those questions is, yes, this world will come, and yes, God does keep his word, then preparing for it is one of the most basic tasks of life. The life to come is, of course, of a much longer duration than life here and now. And preparing for it is more important than any short-term issues we face today. You know, visionary thinking, so popular, is, is designed to consider the long-term picture. You know, even now in interviews and job interviews and stuff, um, one of the questions they ask is, well, where do you see yourself in five years? I know some of you haven't been to a job interview in a long time, okay? So I'm just letting you know what they ask, okay? But uh, you do have a job. You see, our allegiance should be to the citizenship flowing into the future. Your citizenship is not here. Your citizenship is not here. It's in the kingdom of God. And so we move in that direction. We move in the direction of the kingdom. Look, resurrection changes everything. And Luke wants us to ponder the so what of Jesus' resurrection. What, is it, what does it call me to? That Jesus is alive and offers forgiveness so that we can have a new relationship with God through him. For believers, resurrection is a reminder New life is the gift from God calling us to walk a walk of gratitude. To those who do not know Jesus Christ as Savior, Scripture calls you to embrace what the resurrection means. You know, the most basic application of all these resurrections accounts is to reassure us that Jesus has risen and is alive. And such reassurance deepens our faith each time God works for us is affirmed. 
You see, the resurrection serves as the basis for our being able to receive the many blessings of God's grace for his children. 1 Peter 1, 3 through 6 talks about that. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade, kept in heaven for you, who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you greatly rejoice, though for now a little while you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. Getting old ain't for sissies. You know, and maybe you've suffered uh, because you shared the good news with somebody and they didn't like that. Can you imagine it? But that happens. And so... He's talking about trials and tribulations that happen because you're following after Jesus. You know, notably notably among these blessings are forgiveness of sins. You're forgiven. You don't have to carry that stuff with you anymore. You don't have to have shame or guilt. The blood of Jesus Christ took care of all that when you called on him and asked him to be your savior. Now, we're not going to necessarily tell all the stories because we'd be ashamed of those behaviors. But you don't have to carry that. You're forgiven. You you get the Holy Spirit. God's Spirit, you're sealed with the Spirit of God. That's the promise. That's the earnest of our redemption. And then He fills you with the Holy Spirit and you start doing things. Some of them a little different than what you're used to, some of them a little scary. But it's okay because God is with you. And then that other thing eternal life. You know, death becomes a passing from this life into the next. But the good news is, is as soon as you receive Jesus Christ as Savior, that's when your eternal life starts. You don't have to wait till you die. Isn't that exciting? Yes. Yeah. 1 Corinthians 15 explains exactly how the resurrection achieves this hope by calling Jesus' resurrection the first fruits. But Christ has indeed been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep, with more resurrections our own to come. Amen? So, I, I want to give you a little history lesson. Did you know this is a feast day? I know you're all going to feast this for lunch, but this is a feast day. This is the feast of first fruits. You see? And that's why Jesus is the first fruit of the resurrection. And then all of us are going to experience that. You know, just like Jesus, up from the grave we will arise. The trump will sound, the archangel will holler, the command will be given and the dead in Christ will rise first and and then we who are alive and remain will be caught up to meet them in the air and there we're ever going to be with our Lord. Hallelujah. That's a good day. Here's, um, I don't have it on a slide because I came up with it this morning and my slide maker doesn't like it when I add things Sunday morning. (laughs) 1 Corinthians 15 20 through 23. But Christ has indeed been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since death came through a man, the resurrection of the dead comes also through a man. For as in Adam all die, so in Christ all will be made alive, but each in his own turn. Christ the first fruits, and then we, his, and then when he comes, those who belong to him. 
So we're just going to be waiting. Amen. I I want to share something out of Ephesians chapter 1. It's a powerful thing. It talks about all the benefits. You know, when you get a job or something, what are the benefits? So I'm going to tell you. Ephesians 1, this isn't up there either, but you can read Ephesians 1. I've been praying this every morning and every evening for months now because it's such a powerful thing. It, it tells me whose I am, and it's just great. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. You've been blessed with every spiritual blessing in Christ. Now listen to this. For he chose us. You're chosen. You are chosen. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight and love. He predestined us to be adopted as his sons and daughters through Jesus Christ in accordance with his, now listen, with the pleasure of his will. It was a pleasure for God to adopt you into his family. It wasn't difficult. It was a pleasure. It was according to his will. To the praise of his glorious grace, which he had freely given us in the one he loves. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace that he lavished on us with all wisdom and understanding. You know, God knew what he was getting into when he saved you. It's kind of exciting, isn't it? (laughs) Just think about it. I lost my place. And he made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in Christ, to be put in effect when the times will reach, have reached their fulfillment, to bring all things in heaven and on earth together under one head, even Christ. In him we have, were also chosen, having been predestined according to his plan of him who works out everything in conformity with the purpose of his will. And you also were included in Christ when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. Having believed, you were marked in him with the seal, the promised Holy Spirit, who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possessions to the praise of his glory. I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. I pray also that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints and his incomparably great power for us who believe That power is like the working of his mighty strength which he exerted in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realms. That's what's working in you. Let's pray. Father, we know that those who need the most love usually make it the most difficult for us to love them. Most often because of the shame and guilt about the things that they have done and the things done to them. So I want you to know that Jesus loves you just the way you are. You don't have to clean up yourself or do anything. He loves you just the way you are. It's unconditional regardless of what you've done or what's been done to you. And I know that because he loves me. There is 
no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus because through Christ Jesus, the law of the spirit of life has set me free from the law of sin and death. So if you'd like to receive Jesus Christ as Savior or rededicate your life to Jesus Christ, all you have to do is ask him. And he will receive you and wrap his arms of love around you. So if you'd like to publicly share your decision, you can come on down and we'll gather around you and hug your neck and offer you signs of reconciliation and love, showing you the Lord Jesus Christ has received you as his friend. And even if you don't come down, if you ask Jesus to be your Savior, he will receive you and show you his love. And so, Father, we just ask that you move by your Spirit today. Encourage hearts. Lord, there are so many people here who have known you for a long, long time. And so, Father, I ask you to just give them a special blessing today. And Lord, for, for those maybe who don't know you or have kind of wandered off and become like the prodigal, help them, Father, come to their sense. And come back because you're waiting for them and we'll receive them with love and care and you will minister to their hearts and bless them and so father we just turn this over to you now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ our Lord Amen and doors were barred and all the windows fastened down I spent the night in sleeplessness and rose at every sound half in hopeless sorrow and half in fear the day would find the soldiers breaking through to drag us all away just before the sunrise I heard something at the wall the gate began to rattle and a voice began to call. I hurried to the window and looked out into the street, expecting swords and torches and the sound of soldiers' feet. There was no one there but Mary, so I went down to let her in. John stood there beside me as she told us where she'd been. She said they moved him in the night and none of us knows where. The stone's been rolled away and now his body isn't there. We both ran toward the garden, then John ran on ahead. We found the stone and the empty tomb just the way that Mary said. But the winding sheet they'd wrapped him in was just an empty shell. And how or where they'd taken him was more than I could tell. Well, something strange had happened there, but just what I didn't know. John believed a miracle, but I just turned to go. Circumstance and speculation Couldn't lift me very high Cause I'd seen them crucify him Then I saw him die Back inside the house again The guilt and anguish came Everything I promised him Just added to my shame when at last it came to choices, I denied I knew his name. And even if he was alive, it just wouldn't be the same. Suddenly the air was filled with a strange and sweet perfume. Light that came from everywhere drove shadows from the room. 
Jesus stood before me with his arms held open wide and I fell down on my knees and just clung to him and cried. He raised me to my feet and as I looked into his eyes, love was shining out from him like sunlight from the skies. Guilt and my confusion disappeared in sweet release. Every fear I'd ever had just melted into peace. Bless this day, church. Open your hearts and feel him in there and go out and bless the world. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.